Hello guys, we are back yet again. Let me officially welcome you into MJ School of Mining and Geology. In today's lesson, we are dealing with UniXL and BiXL minerals. Please don't forget to like, share, comment, and hit the notification button below so that you get notified once we upload new content. So in today's um, lesson, like we said, we're dealing with um, UniXL and BiXL minerals. So if you haven't yet visited our video on isotropic, isotropic and anisotropic minerals, um, opaque and transparent minerals together with um, transmitted and um, reflected light, uh, light microscopy, you are more than welcome to visit them into our MJ School of Mining and Geology YouTube channel. So um, let's remind ourselves that, um, sorry about that, let's remind ourselves that minerals, they um, are divided into two types. We've got uh, minerals, okay, um, which they're divided into either those that are opaque, those that are opaque, and those that are transparent. Um, allow me just to write trans um, for the sake of time. So those that are opaque are those that do not allow light to pass through them, and then you can um, analyze them using the reflected light microscopy, and then those that are transparent, they are those that allow light to pass through, and they can be analyzed using um, transmitted light microscopy. So the minerals which are transparent, and they can either be isotropic or anisotropic. Isotropic and anisotropic. So anisotropic. So allow me to write to just write them in short. So isotropic are those that they possess um the same optical properties um and, and then and then when light passes through them um, um they do not change direction but with anisotropic they um, when light passes through these minerals they diffract okay they yes they show a, a diffraction or refraction all right they show what you call a double refraction all right so that is what you call bifringence and they possess different optical properties and then the minerals which are isotropic uh, which are anisotropic they can either be uniaxial and biaxial all right okay so we know bi means two uni means one so uniaxial um there are those minerals that have got one optic axis and then by axial they've got two optic axis and then we know as a matter of fact that all minerals that um, 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 are crystallized, uh, all minerals which are anisotropic, they um, crystallize in triclinic, monoclinic, orthorhombic, tetragonal, and hexagonal. All right. So, um, and then it means only minerals which are which um, crystallizes in tetragonal and hexagonal are called uniaxial and those that crystallize in monoclinic um, monoclinic triclinic and orthorhombic they are called by ex uh, by axial all right so i hope you get the gist so in today's lesson we're going to be dealing mainly in uniaxial and by axial minerals and also we're gonna look um into the um, the optic sign we're going to determine the optic sign so minerals that crystallize in tetragonal and hexagonal uh, uh, crystals systems um, are uniaxial and are characterized by two extreme refractive indices two extreme refractive indices we're talking about um, ordinary refractive index and extraordinary refractive, in, re, refractive index. And now, minerals that crystallize in triclinic, monoclinic, and orthorhombic crystals are biaxial and are characterized by three refractive in, uh, indices, um, one of which is intermediate between uh, the two. So when we talk about these ones, we, um, we um, talk about the gamma, we talk about um, um, alpha, and then, yeah, I don't know how to write alpha, but yeah, alpha, gamma, and what we call a beta. So I'll show you with time um, why these three indices um, are, are different in terms of size. The other one is big, it's, it's bigger, the other one is smaller, the other one is intermediate, but we're going to deal with that in a few. So 
In an axial, like we said, they, they have one optic axis and then this optic axis is um, parallel to the C crystallographic axis. And then um, um, these minerals, they crystallize in tetragonal and hexagonal like we already mentioned. And then now, uh, if the optic sign or the optic axis is parallel with the C crystallographic axis, um, and then it, 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 it means that um, when light is um, traveling through this, um, let's say this is your thin section placed on the stage, and then when light passes through this crystal, it won't change direction. It won't change direction. So light traveling along the direction of the single um, optic axis, when light travels along the direction of the single optic axis, along here, along the single optic axis, um, it will exhibit the same properties as isotropic materials in the sense that polarization direction of the light is not changed is not changed by passage through the by passage through the, the crystal because if it changes then they'll behave like an isotropic because now they refract and they will show that the single uh, uh, light will sp uh, split into two and then that is what you call bifringence which is why an isotropic minerals even if you um, observe them using um, cross polarizers they will still uh, show this bifringence because of the double refraction now um, so it means um, the if we have the stage like that if we have two stages like this you can either put your sphere okay these spheres they are like sorry about that let me put this one here so the it can the optic axis can either be um perpendicular to the um, stage of the microscope or it can be parallel to the stage of the microscope so it means if the optic axis is oriented perpendicular to the stage of the microscope like this now, now with the upper nickel or the analyzer inserted remember uh, when we say we are uh, 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 when we say we are in cross polarized light it means the upper analyzer is inserted so the grain will um, remain extinct throughout a 360 degrees rotation if the optic axis is perpendicular to the stage of the of the rotation all right now the single optic axis if now um it's a, a coincident with c crystallographic uh, axis if it's um coincident with a, a c crystallographic axis all right, uh, then light traveling parallel to the C crystallography axis will behave as if it were traveling in isotropic substance, all right, because they are parallel to one another. So it means when you're looking down the C axis, when you're looking down the C axis, when you're looking down the C axis, like here, yeah, what you see it's only um, um, equal length of A axis. Um, like in isometric, you know, in isometric minerals, um, we have got the. We just say this. Um, sorry about that. This is A1, okay. Then this is A2, and then this is A3 for isometric. It means all these um, axes are equal. All right. So it means when you are looking down the C axis, you only see all these three A's, which are equal in length all right so now if they are equal in length when you're looking down uh, um, see excess of tetragonal and hexagonal minerals it's because of light traveling parallel to the c axis all right and then that will behave like uh, a, an, an isotropic system or, or isotropic uh, a, a material now um when we determine in, in, in uh, uniaxial minerals, now you understand that they've got one optic axis and um, they um, crystallize in, in, in tetragonal and um, they crystallize in, 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 in tetragonal and hexagonal. And then um, when light pass through the crystal, it does, it, it, it does not change direction, all right? So we understand that now we should determine the sign. So all of the, the sign, they are determined using what we call the, um, the sign is determined using what we call the, yeah, so.
now we're dealing with the optic sign determination. We are dealing with optic sign determination. So like we said that UniXL minerals, they've got two extreme values of refractive index and we call those normal, no ordinary refractive index and the extraordinary refractive index, ordinary and extraordinary. All right. Now, so if you want to determine the optic sign of UniXL minerals, you look into this ordinary and, and extraordinary. So remember UniXL minerals, they just means one of the refractive, one of the refractive index, it's unequal from the rest, right? In simple terms and usually the extraordinary, all right? So if you want to determine the optic sign for uniaxial negative or uniaxial positive, and it means then for, for the negative one, it means the extraordinary, extraordinary, not extraordinary, sorry, ordinary refractive index is greater than the extraordinary refractive index all right or you can say extraordinary it's less than the ordinary refractive index but now with uniaxial positive the opposite will be true it means the extra or sorry ordinary refractive index is greater than this one like that no it's not greater but it's less than it's less than or you can say ne or extra refractive index it's greater than the it's greater than ends of oh that is to say ordinary in simple terms but now i will show you this how we determine all of this now the optic sign is it, it depends on you compressing or stretching the um the the um optic axis so if you can see here we have stretched it and then here we have compressed it all right so as you can see we have already mentioned that the fact that for uni excel minerals it means one of refractive index is just the different it's just unequal from from the rest all right yes so let's consider here when we stretch the optic axis when we stretch it, then you can see that, that NE, the extraordinary refractive index is greater than the ordinary refractive index. All right. You can see here that extraordinary is greater. You can see this is greater. It's greater than the ordinary. So then we say it's uniaxial. You say it's uniaxial positive. But now if you were to compress it, then you can now see that the extraordinary extraordinary is less than the ordinary then we say it's uniaxial positive so that's simple how we determine the the sign of the uniaxial now for biaxial we've already mentioned that biaxial have got two optic axes and then they are all minerals that crystallizes in orthorhombic monoclinic and triclinic system all right now and we've mentioned the fact that biaxial refractive indices they vary between or they they've got three refractive indices, right? And then these three refractive indices they are called alpha, beta, and gamma. And then the smallest refractive index it's alpha. The intermediate will be beta, and then the largest refractive index it will be the gamma. So keep that in mind as we are going to be dealing with that. Now, let me just quickly show you using the, um, this uh, diagram. We say here it's what you call the gamma and then and then this is beta, this is alpha. So uh, let's check the size. You can see that the uh, gamma, the gamma is the longest, is the, is the longest or the largest refractive index all right is the longest refractive index so which is why we said the longest refractive index is called gamma then let's check the 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 the, the alpha and beta you can now see that beta 
it's it's intermediate but now alpha is the smallest you can check the size alpha is the smallest and beta is the intermediate which is why we're saying beta it's the intermediate i hope you understand now so let's now check the these angles all right let's check now these angles in when we uh, determining the 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 the, the sign optic sign of biaxial minerals so so we've got in biaxial we've got two optics optic axis one and two we've got two optic axis and then between these we've got the angle called 2v we've got the angle called 2v if you you can see that it's like a v here it's like a v here it's like a v here and then it's like we have another v here and then which is why we say it's a 2v all right and then in the positive when 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 we say by axial mineral it's positive we say now the this gamma it cuts through the the angle 2v so we say uh, uh, because this angle this angle it's acute it's acute angle then we say gamma it's acute bisectrix right we say the gamma for the by excel uh, minerals or by excel positive minerals gamma it's acute bisectrix but now what about alpha alpha you can still see here we st we still have the ang the, the 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 angle 2v and then but now for this angle 2v it's greater so we say it's obtuse angle so then now alpha is the one that cuts through okay or the 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 2v into two equal halves then we say alpha is the obtuse bisectrix right but now we don't end only there we say if we want to know that we are in biaxial positive we check the 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 distance of this angle called beta okay we check the distance of beta from the alpha and gamma so if you can check beta here the angle between uh, or the beta it's it's closer to alpha here but when we check the distance between beta and alpha sorry beta and gamma it's greatest or it's greater so in by xl positive beta is closer to the alpha than to gamma so that's what that's how we use uh, uh this diagram to determine the by xl uh, or the optic sign of by xl materials all right so i hope you understand now the optic sign of by xl minerals depends on whether beta refractive index is closer to alpha or beta or, or gamma you have seen how we look into that and then and then by xl positive if beta is closer to alpha than to uh, to to gamma all right so in this case the acute angle 2v between the optic axis is bisected by gamma refractive index and then we say that is acute bisectrix because it bisects this angle okay so i hope you understand what we're talking about now now in last but not least let's check let's check by axial negative by axial negative it means beta is closer to alpha than to gamma all right and then then in this case let's check the check this angle is obtuse okay the greatest then gamma alpha uh, gamma in this case we say it's obtuse by six and then let's check this one alpha it's what you call the iq by six tricks so i hope you understand this guys thank you guys for joining us today and uh, please don't forget to like share and comment to our youtube content so that we keep growing until next time cheers